one of our most amazing areas underwater. It's full of life, it's colorful, it's beautiful. A huge number of animals live on the coral reefs, depend on the coral reefs as a habitat, as a food, um, for so many different reasons. Some may only spend a few years on the reef, but most of those animals out there um, spend the entirety of their lives out on the coral reefs. So without the corals, we wouldn't have those animals. Corals have a mutual relationship with a small little type of algae. And it's a type of algae called a dinoflagellate, and it's a type of dinoflagellate that we call zooxanthellae, or symbiodinium, or just basic little algal symbionts. Now these little symbionts are photosynthetic, and they donate extra energy to the coral. And in return, the coral gives these little symbionts a safe place to live. So it's a nice mutual relationship where both benefit. In times of stress, this relationship breaks down. Now, there's a lot of argument as to whether the coral kicks the algae out, or whether they leave of their own accord. But whatever the case, the coral loses the orange, yellow, brown, gold kind of pigmentation that the symbionts give to the coral. And when that happens, all you see is the white skeleton of the coral below. And that's called bleaching. By no means is the coral dying or dead when it's bleached like that. It's just in a state of extreme stress. At that point, if the environmental stressor is relieved, then the relationship between the coral and the symbiont will resume, and the coral and the reef can recover in general. If the stressor isn't relieved though, the corals can and will die. In the 1970s, oxybenzone was introduced to sunscreens to help us be able to play in the sun and not look like lobsters or tomatoes at the end of the day. But unfortunately, oxybenzone has had to found a lot of very significant effects on corals and general animals that live in the tropical marine environment. Specifically, when coral larva is in the presence of oxybenzone, there is a mutation in its developmental DNA. And what happens is that it starts to develop, it, it develop its skeleton, and the skeleton breaks through the cells of the coral larva and actually grows around the coral larva itself. Essentially, imagine your skeleton just breaking out through your arm and entombing you in a tomb of your own making, basically burying you alive. That's what's happening to the little coral larva. So we're already having problems where there's coral spawning that exists, uh, but the corals are struggling to spawn because there's not many corals left in the system. So any spawning that does exist, and then we have coral larvae that manage to survive, and they make it back to the reef just to come into contact with oxybenzone and essentially self-destruct. It's also been shown to absorb in the human body as well. Um, so all you gotta do is just turn that bottle over and you'll see oxybenzone on most of the sunscreens they use today. Uh, you also see other chemicals as homosalate um, and another hormone disruptor as well. So any of those chemicals can actually affect your body and the water as well. There are sunscreen companies that have done specific experiments uh, that go to show how much of an impact sunscreens have. And they've done it with coral larva and with fish and most of the chemicals in all of these kill everything that is in the laboratory experiment. But sunscreen is important for us. The biggest thing to look for is that chemical, oxybenzone. Um, definitely be careful watching a label or reading a label that says reef safe because there's a lot of different things that go into that. Look at the labels, look for the chemicals. So some other methods is using basically rash guards or any shirts or um, buffs to cover your face, hats, sunglasses, all of that. Um, and then just knowing your product. So if you want to use a certain type of sunscreen, turn it over, look at the label, know what you're putting on your body and know what it can do to your body and actually the ocean as well. Um, so I recommend a product called Stream to Sea. It doesn't use any harmful chemicals and they have gone through rigorous testing to make sure it does not harm the reef or the fish or even your body as well.